everybody and welcome to my channel or welcome back to it. If you don't know who I am or what I do, my name is Gabriella. I work as a freelance photographer and model in the Metro Detroit and Los Angeles area now. And today what I'm going to talk about is what I always have in my camera bag. Obviously everybody does these videos. Maybe mine's probably exactly the same as somebody else's because I would think, you know, photographers probably have the same stuff. But I do get a lot of people asking me kind of what I shoot on and what lenses I use, what gear I use, what I recommend. And so what better way to recommend some products and some gear than telling you what I use myself. If you haven't seen my work before or if you have and you want to look at it again because I'm constantly updating it, um, you can check out my website here and you can see that I do a lot of product photography and I do a lot of like editorial um, fashion style stuff as well. So those are the main things I shoot. Everything and all my gear that I use is geared for that style of shooting. Um, if you're looking for certain lenses for like, I don't know, landscape photography or astrophotography, this stuff can work, but I don't know if it's the best. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I am in some nice spring clothes. I am hopeful that spring is coming early for Michigan. Low key, it's been like 60 degrees a couple days, so loving it. I'm running with it, hoping that this weather keeps up. And with that, I'm gonna go grab my backpack and we're gonna see what I usually bring to photo shoots. It's kind of a lot. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is my actual backpack. Um, I feel like a lot of people look for like backpack recommendations for stuff. Mine isn't the bougiest. I literally got it on Amazon. I will try to link it below if it's still available. Um, but here she is. It's kind of heavy. For some reason, I literally left everything in there. Um, but this is my backpack. It's got a nice front pocket here that I keep all my camera stuff in. It's got space at the top and it has a slot for my laptop inside, which I love. Um, it has a side. Ugh. It's got a side access pocket here so I can go in and reach stuff. I literally never use it. And of course, we have a water bottle holder here, which I also don't use because my water bottle doesn't fit in it. I really like this bag. It is weatherproof, which is helpful. Um, I've taken it, I have taken it into abandoned buildings and gotten it dirty. I've set it on the ground. I've had it in the rain, and it has done me nothing but good. So I can't complain about this. The link is in the description if you're interested in getting a similar bag. All right, so we're gonna work top down of this bag just because I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. So the first thing that I always make sure to have with me if I'm shooting on location is my drone. This soft case actually fits perfectly in the top of this bag, which I really like. I'm not super bougie. I'm a fairly new drone pilot, so I don't have the nicest drone ever, but I will say I do love it and it gets what I need done. Um, I have the DJI Mavic Mini. It's super light, which I really like, and it's under that weight regulation, so I can fly this legally without having to have a permit, which is really nice. But low-key, if you're looking into getting a new drone, you probably want to go with the Mavic Mini 2 if you're a photographer, because this does not shoot raw photos, so I will be upgrading soon. Um, but if you are learning, or if you're like just trying to do some videos and stuff, this does shoot 2.7K, which is really nice. It's super light and portable. I got the Fly More combo, so when I bought mine, it came with the drone, it came with the remote, which I think that they all will come with the remote because how are you supposed to fly otherwise? And it came with a rechargeable, um, three rechargeable batteries, which are really nice because the drone batteries typically don't last more than like 20 to 30 minutes each, and sometimes you need more time, so. That is what I always have with me. That's the drone that I use. I've used it for a couple things here and there. I'll pop some photos up here that you can just see. Um, like I said, those were JPEG files, so I will be upgrading probably to the Mavic Mini 2. But tried and true, I really like this drone and I always have it with me if I'm shooting on location. Obviously with studio stuff, you don't really need it. All right, now we are moving to the front pocket of this backpack. So we're gonna go into here. And this is where I store all of my actual camera stuff, my cameras in here, my lenses, a lot of everything else I have I keep in there. So pop her open and see what's in there. So it's a little, I mean, I don't want to say that it's messy, but it's definitely full. It's definitely not something that is a light bag to carry around by any means. If anybody sees me in person or if you've seen my body type on Instagram, I am small and weak. So this is a workout when I carry it, but I need all this stuff. So one of the, so another thing that I always keep on me, even if I'm not going to use it, is this DJI Osmo Action. It's the DJI version of a GoPro. I don't have a reason that I got the DJI one before getting like a GoPro, but my friend was selling this one and I was like, okay, whatever. I trust him and his opinions of stuff. So I ended up snagging this for him for pretty cheap. I think only like a couple hundred dollars. And honestly, it's one of those things that I love having at all times. Um, it's got built-in stabilization, which is really nice as well. 
And if you've seen some of my other videos, um, especially the two photographers shoot one model videos, I will link it up here. I use this to give a first person perspective of when I'm shooting. So this thing to me is really helpful or even just getting behind the scenes stuff when I'm doing commercial work. It's super small, which makes it really easy to carry and I can always have it on me. All right, time to take out big chungus here. My camera, this is the camera that I use for basically almost literally everything. The only time I don't use this camera is when I'm at the Gerard and Bellavender studio where I'm usually shooting with their 5DS. But this hefty boy is always with me and always in my camera bag. This is a Canon 5D Mark IV with the battery pack extension. I know people don't like these, but not having to change my battery for like a week is pretty awesome. And I shoot almost every single day, so if you're like thinking twice about getting one of these, I would say definitely do it. Um, it does add a, quite a bit of weight to this camera. So if you're like one of those running gun type people that like want something super light, first of all, DSLR is not for you, definitely go mirrorless, but I would highly recommend this. Also quick disclaimer, I'm really not smart. I literally have had this camera now for probably like six to eight months. I bought this battery pack with the camera and I just found out that there's buttons up here to control everything like you would at the top of the camera. So the whole time, literally the whole time I've been shooting, I've been doing this with my wrist and I'm like, wow, this is like stupidly heavy. Like I did not even think that this is definitely smarter and it has every single button that I need. Shutter, I can change the shutter speed and ISO, focus buttons, autofocus. I don't know how I didn't know that, but let me tell you that has been life changing to know. So I have this battery pack with me at all times. It's always attached to my camera. Literally Loki, I lost the door to the actual camera body. So I can't use the camera unless I have this on there. Um, and then this lens, which is my typical go-to lens, although I am trying to kind of steer away from using this zoom lens is the, I'll take it off. This is a Tamron 24 to 70 lens. I actually went with this Tamron 24 to 70 over the Canon. They are the same, um, basically the same lens. This is an F 2.8. This most of the Canons are F 2.8. I don't know if they make one lower than that. Um, but I went with this one because this one has built in image stabilization and there are some things that I do that involve video. So I was like, I'm going to go with this one. And it was a bit of a cheaper option. I have shot with the Canon's 24 to 70 as well. And there's obviously a bit of a difference in terms of like what that blur looks like in the background. But otherwise, I love this lens. I would highly recommend it. I'll link it below as well. I think I paid $900 for this brand new and the Canon, like the new version of the Canon one, I think is like 13 to $1,400. So at this point in my shooting career, um, I definitely use this on almost every single shoot, even if I'm not using it the whole time. It's just nice to have that little bit of range. If you're shooting weddings or if you're shooting events, you're definitely gonna want something like this that you have the capability of changing that focal length because shooting on a prime can be really hard when you're like on the go, trying to make sure you're getting everything and capturing everything that's really important. So highly recommend having a 24 to 70 or something near this range in your camera bag at all times. All right, moving on to what else is in this bag of goodies here. So I'm gonna go through some of the other lenses that I have with me at all times. Um, this is just for variety or if I want just like to work on a prime lens. Since I've been shooting a lot more editorial style stuff and since I shoot portraits, I actually do prefer to shoot prime lenses when the opportunity is there. Um, I really like the idea of moving myself versus using the zoom lens as kind of a crutch of not having to get as many creative angles. So I always keep some prime lenses on me. One of the lenses I carry with me all the time is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2. Um, these lenses are a bit expensive. I was very lucky that this one was given to me, uh, but this is like such a gorgeous lens, especially if you're a portrait photographer, highly recommend having a 50 millimeter prime. Even if it's not the 1.2, the Canon does make a fairly affordable, I think it's only like 250, $300, maybe not even that much, uh, 50 millimeter 1.8, which if you're a portrait shooter, you're not really gonna need to be shooting below like 2.0 anyway. Um, but I always keep this one on me. It's gorgeous. It works beautifully with my Canon camera. Obviously, um, the bokeh that you can get with this camera and that blur in the back is just buttery. It's soft. I love this lens. Highly recommend grabbing a 50 millimeter if you're looking to kind of see what lenses work really well. I don't know if this is true or if I've read this wrong somewhere. It's either the 35 millimeter or the 50 millimeter that's supposed to be as clo like close to human vision. So what that means, there's not a ton of distortion with this, which there is with like a 14 millimeter lens or something like that. 
So highly recommend always having a 50 millimeter in your bag if you have the option to. It's another lens I carry with me all the time and this one's a little bit strange. I don't feel like this is a focal length that most people prefer, um, but I really enjoy the Canon 135 millimeter F1.2 as well. I love the focus fall off on this one. Most people opt for like an 85 millimeter. I actually did have that lens. I do miss it, but I did opt to keep this one over the 85 millimeter. This one to me just gives me like a little bit more of that beautiful drop off that I'm looking for, especially for portraits. Here's a shot that I took with this. This is actually midday and I love kind of how the background's blurred in a way that makes it look like it's not midday, if that makes sense. Huge fan of this. The only downfall with a 135, I would say, is that you do have to be fairly far away from your subject. But with COVID, this has been really nice. I can kind of back off, stay away from people and still grab some really nice crisp crispy shots. So the third lens I have on me almost always now, and this one's actually fairly new, my Rokinon 14 millimeter. This one's actually pretty new to me, so I've been kind of like really happy and been playing with it quite a bit. Um, gorgeous lens, obviously a downfall to this is that it does not have autofocus. However, I only paid $150 for this and it is beautiful. Um, nailing that focus can be kind of hard because you have to do it manually and I've been working on it and I haven't done the best, um, but I definitely want to keep this on me at all times. It's the perfect amount of like distortion and the perfect amount of world in the photo without it being like a bubble fisheye lens, which I really like. So far, she's been good to me. I'm excited to do some more with it. Here's a shot that I took recently with this lens. I literally got it like probably a week or a week and a half ago, but I did want to talk about it because it is very affordable if you're willing to do a little extra work and do that focus manually. So if you're like me and you really want to get some more creative angles or if styling is very important in terms of where the location is and you want to make sure you capture both, having something like the 14 millimeter is going to be very helpful for you. It's going to grab a lot of that location and making sure that obviously you have your person or your model or whoever is still in the frame. So moving on to some of the smaller things that I have in my bag with me at all times. Again, some of these things are new as well, but I thought I would include them because they're going to live in my bag all the time. So one of the things I keep on me all the time is this like little UV filter. You can't really see it. I'll put it up to the lens in a second. It actually makes things a little bit hazier. This isn't like the super trendy one. This one's really old, like made for a film camera. I don't really even know where I got this, but I keep it on me all the time because people want that like haze, dreamy effect a lot now. So I keep this one on me, you can kind of see what it does. But it has a spot in the middle that's actually not hazy, so it's really nice because I can put my subject in that spot and then they're not hazy, you can kind of see it. If I move out here, I get a little hazier and if I move here, I'm a little less. So I keep this on me, it's super small, it fits right in the little pocket here. And I just keep that on me in case I see a shot that would look good with a little bit more of like glow or a little bit more like stretch light, anything like that. I got it for cheap. I know that Prism FX sells them, they're low-key kind of expensive, so that's why I don't have an updated version of one. You can literally achieve the same thing by just taking a filter, a regular UV filter, and putting some like lip gloss, some chapstick, Vaseline, anything on one of those, and these are fairly cheap. And you can find these at like thrift shops and vintage shops for like four or five bucks a piece. So there's multiple ways to do it without breaking the bank and spending that like $120 or whatever on the one that they make. I guess factory. The next small little thing that I keep in my camera bag, and this is actually fairly new as well, is a hot shoe phone holder. Um, I don't typically use like an on-camera flash, so my hot shoe is usually pretty available. This is ex actually technically called a soft shoe because there's no, there's no mechanics to make it link to the camera, but this is really nice because if I'm shooting, and I'm actually starting to do this more, so you can follow me on Instagram and hopefully TikTok once I hit a thousand followers. So this just sits right on the camera here, and what's really nice about this is I can put my phone in this and actually go live on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, or whatever, or YouTube if I wanted to, um, while I'm shooting, which is really fun, and it's an interesting perspective for people to just see kind of what it actually looks like from my perspective while I'm doing it. So this is really nice. This is literally $9 on Amazon. I will link that below as well. And it tips left and right. So that's kind of nice if you want like more of an angled look or if you want it angled up a little bit, whatever you need, it's there for you. So this little gadget's cool. It's definitely something I'm gonna keep on me all the time because I wanna be able to kind of just share what I'm doing while I'm doing it. All right, this is another little thing that's weird, but I love it. I recently refound this camera. This is actually one of the first cameras I ever was shooting on. If I can find the photos, 
I hope that I can. I've had this camera, this is not my camera, it was my mom and my stepdad's camera, but we brought this when we went to China and I brought this to Shanghai, Beijing, and this is the camera that I shot the photos that I shot there on. Um, so this does have a little bit of like a nostalgia value to me. I don't know if you could just hear what that sounded like turning on, but if you're like me and had one of these, that sound is like, such a nostalgic sound to me, but I love having it on me just in case I want to drive a shot or something. Like this literally I think has like 12 megapixels. It's nothing spectacular, but it still works and it somehow has image stabilization, which I don't think is very good. But it's just a fun little thing to have on me if I want to go for like a little bit more like early 2000s vibe photos. And it's super light, it's not like it takes up any space, so that just lives in that pocket also. So moving on to some of the more boring things I have in my bag, but this is mostly suggestion of what I think that you should always have in your bag, especially if you're just starting out, you don't really know what you need and what you don't. Um, so one of the first things is extra batteries. You should always, always, always have extra charged batteries with you. I also always have a battery charger with me because sometimes when I get on set or if I'm at a wedding or something, I will actually plug in my battery somewhere and make sure that it's charged just because there's nothing worse than being on set or being at a shoe and your camera battery dies. So always have at least a battery charger and one extra battery with you. Got 99 problems, but a charged camera battery ain't one. Another thing that you should always, always, always have, and I have done this before, so learn from my mistakes and don't make them yourself. Have extra SD cards. Always have SD cards, as many as you have empty with you. The SD cards I use are the SanDisk Extreme. I know they have the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Always clean them out. Make sure that you're backing up your data. That is also something that I have dealt with. So make sure you learn from my mistakes and don't make them yourself. I'd recommend at least getting the SanDisk Extremes. Um, when I first got my 5D Mark II, it came with this. And so I shot some stuff on one of these cards and honestly, it was not good. I put this card like into my computer or my little card reader and some of the photos like were messed up. So if you've seen my Arsenal review video, there's actually an example of what this card did to some of my photos. So I would not recommend getting cheap cards. Obviously, if you're on a budget, that is what it is, but I would at least recommend investing in decent SD cards because then at least you don't have to worry too about your files being correct. With that, it's important if you have a drone to have a micro SD card because those are what they use. So make sure you always have one of these. This one's actually a 200 gigabyte, which is really nice. Um, I don't really ever use that much. The Extreme Pro one that I have, this is the Ultra Plus, which is also a really good line of them. They're a little slower than Extreme, but still work really well. My Extreme one is actually in this camera currently, but if you're gonna be a drone pilot, make sure you have a few of these because you never know how much it's gonna fill up, especially if you're shooting 2.7K, or even if you have a nicer drone than I do and you can shoot 4K, these will fill up fast. So just make sure you have some of these. All right, the last boring thing in my camera bag is going to be, and this is, you know, this is gonna be a doozy. This is gonna age me a little bit, but I promise you it's nice to have a flash drive. You should always have a flash drive in your backpack. Um, I do specifically because when I work at the studio, I will shoot tethered on their stuff. And so that way I can just take the files with me. But if you never know when you're in a situation where you might need to transfer files or if you have a second shooter for a wedding or for an event, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get the files the night of, put them on a flash drive and take them home versus like trying to do any sort of um, cloud drop or send or anything like that, just because raw files take up so much space. And then you don't have to worry about meeting up with your second shooter later or taking their cards or whatever. You could also give them an SD card, but it is just nice to have one of these with you at all times. Oh, the tag has been on this shirt all day. I really thought that there was like, I don't know, a mouse on me or something. I was about to freak out, but it's fine. Also my Canon M50, which I'm shooting this video on, which is why I didn't show it on here, is something that I carry with me pretty often as well. Almost always, but especially when I'm doing any sort of video work or blog or anything like that, because it's a much lighter camera, it's easier and mirrorless, like the focus thing is just easier. So if you're gonna go shoot anything, what I would say are necessities based on what I just showed you right now, obviously are a camera body, SD cards, extra batteries and charger, your 24 to 70 if you have one, and a 50 millimeter just because that um, 
f-stop's gonna be a little bit lower. You can get a little bit more buttery background if you have something that is a prime lens. Otherwise, I would not say any of these other things in my backpack are a necessity. This is just the things that I like to carry with me because I like having that variety available. Um, depending on the day, I also will have my Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 with me, but that is something that has started to low-key phase out of my bag. I do have a video on the Sigma 35 millimeter lens if you wanna check that out. It's their art series. It's like such a beautiful lens and it's a very good lens if you're on a budget. For some reason, half of my video is turned silent and has no copyright strikes. I tried to get in contact with YouTube on it, but since I don't have a thousand subs yet, I can't actually contact them. So I'm very sorry, but you can get halfway through the video, at least kind of see how it works and see what I like about it and whatnot. Hoping that when I hit a thousand subs that I can contact them and get that figured out so that way I don't have to lose that video on my channel. But you know, I guess it just happens. I don't really know what to do about it yet, but check it out if you wanna know a little bit more about that lens. All right, with that, obviously I carry a lot of stuff on me from being such a tiny person and it's why my back always hurts. If you have any questions about any of the gear that I use, I have linked, I think, everything that I've talked about in this video below, but if you have any questions on how to use it, where to get it, anything at all, let me know. If you enjoyed this video or if you like me, go ahead and like that lick that Ugh, no 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 if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that like button and if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed me go ahead and hit that subscribe button i am slowly climbing the ladder to a thousand subs and i'm very much looking forward to it like i said if you have any questions let me know drop them in the comments hit me up on instagram wherever works for you i'm available by email as well and i will see you in the next one i can't take it off i can't take it off I can't take